right, next proof. This is a math induction proof. And math induction proofs can get pretty scary. Um, what's nice about the first few math induction proofs you have in your foundations book, it really illustrates for you what math induction is all about. So a trigger word to use in induction is show for show true for all and those kind of words, um, big or equal one or for every n in the natural numbers. It gives you a hint it might work. It doesn't mean it will work. Um, it's a, something you can attempt. One of the difficulties of proof writing is that there's no set way to do every single proof and you might have to try some things out and it really allows you to experiment and be comfortable with experimenting. I make it sound like it's really fun. It is. So in this one it's a, 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 a very standard thing that you want to prove that the summation is actually equal to this 2 to the n minus 1 formula for each n in n. So these are the trigger words right here that lead me to believe I might have to use induction or could use induction. So the first step of an induction proof is just to fool around with a few n's and see what's going on. Typically the first step is just to try n equals 1. I try a few more um, and I gave you the reason in class. My last name is Thomas. I indeed am named for St. Thomas the Apostle who had to see to believe. So I've got to see a few to kind of get that feel for it. The second reason is I'm also hunting for a pattern that will make the next step easier for me. So I put in n equals 1. If I put in n equals 1 into this side, I get 2 to the 0, which is 1. It's the very first element. And if I put in n equals on, 1 on this side, I get 2 minus 1. And um, it's indeed true that 1 is equal to 1. Now let's try n equals 2. I get 1 plus 2 on this side. And on this side, I get 3. And so they're equal. Sometimes after a couple times you can see a pattern and it'll lead you like why 1, 2 depends on what I did for 1 or 3 depends what I did for 2. I'm not really seeing it here. So if I can't really see why this is happening with the numbers, I move on. So that's unfortunate because you don't have an example where I can see what's going on with the numbers and it leads me right into step 2. I'll try to find an example like that for you. So the second step is to lay out what we call the induction hypothesis. So what's happening here, as um, we heard in class, uh, someone said that it, it was like you first st start on the first step. Cadet Curry had mentioned you first start, start on the first step. And uh, if you show that the first stair in the staircase um, works, then um, you would uh, pretend like you got to the kth stair and you're trying to go from the k stair to the k, k plus first stair. <coughs> I, um, I myself think of it as doing. I did one. I did two. I did three. I have unlimited time on my hands. So I just would love to just keep going and try out n equals four, n equals five. Eventually even I will get tired. And so I say, okay, I'm doing the same process every time. Let's pretend I got to the k step and I did that and I did it perfectly and I'm going to use that knowledge to get to the k plus first step. So I'm going to assume that I made it all the way up to the k step or the k staircase as Emily pointed out in class. I got, got up to the k staircase. Can I leap from the k staircase to the k plus first sta staircase? That's called the induction hypothesis, assuming that I reached the kth staircase. That's my no. That's what I'm allowed to use. I'm going to use that induction hypothesis to show this um, formula holds for n equals k plus 1. So again, there's my induction hypothesis. Here's what I'm supposed to show. I'm supposed to show that this left side of the formula, when I put in k plus 1, it equaled the right side of the formula when I put in n equals k plus 1. When I have an equality to show, it gives me a way to start. I'm supposed to start here, fool around with it with algebra, and end up here. So here's my proof. I start where I had the bracketed start here. Now, this part, 1 plus dot 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 all the way to the 2k minus 1, by the induction hypothesis is equal to 2, k minus, 2 to the k minus 1. 
So I'm going to replace the first part of that series by 2 to the k minus 1. And I let my reader know that this I'm using the induction hypothesis. If you don't use the induction hypothesis for an induction proof, something has gone wrong. You might not have seen where you're using it, or something else might have gone wrong. So that's a flag. To the reader, you're letting them know this is indeed an induction proof. I'm using the induction hypothesis. So state it when you use this. Now you do high school commutative algebra. So there's two of these guys. So I combine them as 2 times 2 to the k minus 1. This is the laws of exponents, this guy. And notice I've ended up where I'm supposed to end up. That completes my proof. So these are nice because they fall out. Um, we mentioned in class that sometimes it's frustrating because they fall out. They, they're a little simple. But um, be glad for now because they can get pretty ugly if you um, it's not that hard to try to give you something that's a little bit uglier. The whole purpose of getting those good fundamentals down is so that we can do something harder. All right, so have fun with this, and you have an induction proof to work out for your homework.